There's one electric car, there's another one. And there's an electric truck. But this is the electric car of choice. If I could easily replace the batteries, this is the car I'd drive you know, every day forever. So here it sits, all this good engineering. This is, this is exactly the way an electric car should be built. Uh, with the really good ammeter, really good uh, voltmeter from acpropulsion.com. So let's uh, see what happens. It goes through the battery check there. And uh, these, these modules come to light. And it says that we're, we're completely full, but we haven't uh, equalized, so we need equalization. And we're not going to equalize today because I have to go. And here we go. And you know, I, I really can't act out in this car every day because it's a big deal to replace the batteries. You have to take the battery tray out from underneath. But if I could easily replace the batteries, you know, with a cost wouldn't matter. The car can basically keep up with, with the Tesla and with a lot of hot cars. And it can't do 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds, but it can do, it can do a lot. <laughs> it can do like 0 to 60 in 5 seconds, and it can beat anything up to uh, 0 to 30. I think it can even beat the Tesla 0 to 30, but maybe not. Tesla is a lot has a lot more powerful batteries, and this thing only has 28 yellow top Optima batteries, little lead acid batteries that weigh 1,300 pounds. As far as the battery weight goes, I'm not sure that's that big of an issue. I mean, the battery on this is 1,300 pounds. The battery battery on the Tesla is about a thousand pounds too, with all the cooling equipment and stuff, and the battery box. So. The weight isn't that much different. In fact, the Tesla might even be heavier since this is unibody and a lot cheaper car originally. So the the just the thing is that the Tesla would have more range. So here's a typical acceleration. You know, uh, about 100 amps um, drawing from the thing momentarily, and everybody else is in the rear view mirror. Um, but you know, of course, I could do I could do much more. So I only acted out once today on on getting on the on ramp on this thing, and I, I didn't really act out that much. But every time you act out, you know, you're putting a little strain on the batteries. And well, so far, of course, these are new batteries, and our state of charge is pretty good. We're pretty up there, you can put a sort of a strain on the batteries, but when they're low, you don't want to put that kind of a strain on them. So that's that's one of the things that you realize when you're driving an electric car for a long time. And you don't have to worry about that sort of thing with a gas car because you know, it just, it just uh, has the same power it always does once if you have gas. So the power profile is different. You know, the thing that depends with a gas car is the is the RPM versus the type of engine. Your best power range is say at 3,500 RPMs. So if you're going if you're going slow, that's that's not a that's not a good uh, not going to give you the maximum power. With an electric car, it isn't so much the RPMs that's important. It's the state of the battery, how much uh, electric power you have got the most power from a standing start. So lowering the battery cost is the most important thing. There, there really isn't any difficulty with having batteries that work. Batteries work and, and the lowest cost battery of all is nickel metal hydride. The next lowest is, is lead acid and the highest cost so far is lithium. And that, that will be borne out now, the, the thing is, the lead acid batteries probably make the most sense for electric cars because the lead is easily recycled and all those batteries that would be in electric cars, such as the ones in this car, form a sort of an urban mine that you could, you could troll this urban mine for old lead. So you wouldn't have to mine new lead because really all you're doing is reforming the batteries, you know, from old batteries into new batteries using all the materials. So you're already starting with the proper mixture of lead and other other additives 
you, you've already got the cases, you know, so all you have to do is process the, the used lead into, used lead batteries into new lead batteries. And, and here you can hear the sound of a clean, clean diesel on our left. And the smell, if you were here, you could smell the clean diesel. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's really stinky. There's that clean diesel again. Okay, I, I may act out here. Okay, so we're done. This somewhat grungy um, 2.4 uh, kilowatt system is already producing 1240 kilowatt, 1240 watts, and, and this early in the morning. So it just need, it also needs to be cleaned. We're down to 11.6. Oh, that's not that's not too bad. So we're still doing okay, and we've got about 15 miles to go. Because I'm going to stop in at the AQMD and see whether they have stopped parking gas cars in front of electric car charging spots as they said they would. A really nice thing about adjustable regen braking is that going down a hill like this, you can exactly adjust your regen braking. You completely gobble up all of the power, as we can tell by the ammeter, of uh, motion. So uh, the steeper the hill, the more regen braking. It's a good thing we, uh, we stopped here to charge. Look at the Look at the trucks and cars on the freeway. It's supposed to be the comb of clean air, you know, and, and look at all these gas cars. And there's a couple of CNG cars, and, and there's a gas Prius, and then all these, these big old gas cars. And then look at the electric vehicle charging spots, you know, so-called charging spots. There, there's, no, there's no electric cars. There's one of those big old lick cars moving out now, a tribute. <laughs> but it's blocking electric vehicle charging spots. And, then, and that's why I have to use this gigantic extension cord because of it cars like this and because the Air Quality Management District doesn't enforce its own regulations, which is obviously why the air quality in this basin is so lousy. It's all air conditioned in here, not with passive heat and cooling, but with massive forced air conditioning. Now downwind is, is what the problem is because there's people that live downwind of this freeway and over that rise, and, and of course, other people living downwind of freeways, other places, and that's why you see that haze up there. Millions of gas cars. Now, this agency, ironically, was highly involved in killing the electric car.